What up? How's everybody doing out there? Doing great. Good. So yeah. are great, we. Great, great, great. Yeah. All right. Hey, if you don't know Teddy Brunetti, the queen of Pittsburgh, you should. That's right. Teddy, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It's a beautiful day here in Pittsburgh today. And uh, got my album out there. Got a video out. We're uh, editing another video right now. And nice. it'll be out soon. And uh, I'm having a ball. I'm living my dream Good. life, really. <laughs> Good. I really liked uh, Evil Woman. I liked that video. I liked the <laughs> premise. And, you know, I'm a little evil myself. At least that's what he says. Anyway. <laughs> so... I was reading through your bio and I noticed that you really looked up to Janice Joplin and what about Janice Joplin did you really like? Was it her voice that it, cause it was so sultry kind of like yours is, or, you know, kind of elaborate on that if you wouldn't mind. Well, back in the day, you know, she was the, she was the bomb. She was the thing, you know, I mean, she was, reckless and she took things she took it out you know and yeah. she just she just was kind of a free spirit and yeah she was she seemed uh, like she was just doing whatever she whatever the hell she wanted to do and that's, i like it you know and you know that's kind of what i do <laughs> there you so, go and the reason why i bring that up is i love janice shop one too i know you know i maybe just you know couple of days younger than you but I really liked Janis Joplin and the one that really got me was uh Bobby McGee and so oh. I, when I saw that in there I had to bring it out I wanted to ask because you know I like Janis Joplin sure. now you've been around for a few days a few <laughs> years <laughs> hey, I'm trying to <laughs> um with you, and I know that I'm not talking specifically about the Queen's, the Queen of Pittsburgh, but who has been the most influential, inf excuse me, pardon me, don't have a stroke because this happens, most influential person that you've actually got to play with? Ooh. I've played, I've, played, I've played with some great people, you know. Um, maybe Carol McDonald. Oh, okay. You know, cool. um, she had a hell of a band. I mean, it was an all woman's band. She had a band called ISIS, not okay. the not the terrorists that we know of today. Right, ISIS, right. the goddess of whatever it is, and um, and it's it's funny because um, when I got involved with her, when she called me, um, she was looking for a female drummer in New York City and my name kept coming up. So finally she, somebody found my number and gave it to her. It was before the internet. So she couldn't just look me up. But um, she, uh, she had this band ISIS and they were, they were on the Midnight Special. She was an Atlantic Records recording artist, okay? And um, so I was in the band she had after that band, which was called Carol McDonald and Witch. So I was a witch. And it was like a 10 piece horn band. Oh, and, wow. those are, and those are still some of the best musicians I've ever played. <laughs> oh, yeah. right. I mean, these girls could, they, they all had chops. They all could play. And we, oh, yeah. played, we played big festivals all over the country. And she told me it's a, on the phone, the, our first conversation, she said, it's a women's band. And I didn't get it, all right? I didn't know. Um, I didn't get, it was like this whole gay thing, right? And I, and I, didn't, I didn't realize what she was telling me. I thought, I thought, okay, we're a little older now, so we're not an all girls band, we're a women's band. I, did, I didn't really understand it. And um, so, but I mean, it didn't take too long to figure out what was going on. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, so we pl I played these concerts all over the country with her. It was the first time, you know, that I flew to gigs and things oh. like that. You know, so we played in Santa Barbara. We did a big, we played these women's festivals. Yeah. And uh, that was when it wasn't cool to be out. Right, if, right. If you, if you were gay or uh, lesbian or whatever. So um, we played these women's festivals and there'd be 
like 4,000 women in the woods camping at these festivals. I mean, it was a, it was a huge, they were all huge ordeals, okay? And um, it was all women, no men under, uh, let's put it this way, nobody with a penis under 10 years old was allowed. So my husband couldn't <laughs> come to the gigs. And I was, when I first hooked up with her, I had just, I had had, my, I was going to take a year off. And, I, and um, I had just had a baby, our first son, and he was like six months old and I was still nursing him. So I took him on the road with us. And those, oh, wow. wo and those women treated me so well with him. You know what I mean? And it was just, it was just wonderful. And they were, they were great. And I'm still friends with, um, Debbie Hastings, the, the bass player, we talk to each other every once in a while on Facebook. And um, she ended up being uh, Bo Diddley's band leader. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. So, um, and we met, this is, this, is another, this is another wild coincidence. My husband and I were on like our 10th or 15th wedding anniversary. We decided to take a cruise. We had given up music. We went back to Pittsburgh and gave up music for a while to raise the kids, okay? I went uh -huh. back to school for ultrasound. I've done the yin and yang of sound. I, I did echocardiograms and vascular yeah, ultrasound sound. for like 20 years, right? We became the people it. we used to make fun of, you know? Yeah. So um, anyway, we had, so we had money because we were, now we had real jobs. <laughs> so uh, we, we decided on our wedding anniversary, we would take a cruise and we took a blues cruise. And oh, nice no idea we get on this ship and you know they give you the uh, uh an itinerary and the first thing we see is it's headlining bo diddley with debbie hastings band and yeah. it was like wow i hadn't seen her in years you know and the first night out we're sitting in this little lounge having a drink and who comes walking in but debbie oh, and wow. it was like whoa it was like oh old home week and she said come on teddy come on jim you're going to be with us. You're with us. You're with the musicians now. So we sat with Bo Diddley at Bo Diddley's table. You know how they seat you with at tables on cruises. I mean, it was our first. Yeah. Cruise. yeah. We, if it hadn't have been for all the blues bands, we would have jumped overboard. It really wasn't our thing. Cruise. Oh yeah. We've been on oh. two cruises. We went on a jam cruise, if you know what that is, and that that was awesome too. Nice. But um, that was a few years ago. But um, yeah. So yeah, we hooked up with Bo Diddley and we got to meet him and hang out with the, with the musicians that, that you know, and it was cool. It was fun. Nice. But, that uh, must have been pretty amazing meeting Bo Diddley. Yeah. Man. Um, oh, he was a character. Oh yeah. Sure. And Debbie's partner, uh, Margo Lewis, um, she had an agency in um, New York. She, she may still have it. I don't know. Uh, TCI at, a booking agency and she she booked Bo, okay? And mm -hmm. um, she hired lawyers and she got people like Bo Diddley, um, their money um, that they got ripped, you know, all those older artists like that really got ripped off back in the day, you know, by the record yeah. companies and what have you. And she was able to recoup a lot of their money for them so that was she she's a wonderful person she did a good thing there huh nice nice yeah. Yeah. so teddy how let's go back how how did you get into drumming like not a lot of girl drummers my yeah. youngest daughter got really into drumming she fell off and stuff like that but how did you get into being a drummer that i want to hear about that well you know, the drums chose me. I didn't choose the drums. Uh, there you go. I was like a, 11 years old. I went to a, a girlfriend's birthday party and she had an older sister uh, who was like 14 or something, a teenager. And her older sister had a Victrola record player and they put this 45 on and it was the Kingsman, uh, Louie Louie. I was across the room and I heard this, the drums are bombastic on that song. Every time I hear it, even to this day, which, you know, I don't hear it that often, but when I do hear it, it gets me. 
and yeah. something happened. Oh my happened. God, I'm hearing it right now in my head. <laughs> I, <laughs> it was a boom, crash, cocoon, and the concussion, and the, it was just, the drum yeah. was just slamming on that tune. Yeah, I mean, it's the greatest drum track, and it just, I mean, it electrified me. It went through me like a bolt of lightning, and I was possessed. I ran to that record player, and I kept playing that song over and over again. And in those moments, I knew at 11, and I had never played a musical instrument, you know, I mean, I was just a kid, right? Yeah. But I knew in those moments, this is what you do. You do this, this is what you do. And you're gonna be a musician and you're gonna play the drums and you're gonna be a musician and you're gonna do music. I mean, I, it was a spiritual experience. I can't explain it any other way. And uh, it was just, they had to pull me away from that little record player to join the rest of the party because I didn't want to leave. And when I went home, I asked if I could have drum lessons. I'm the oldest of 10 kids, by the way. So um, this might be one of the reasons why my parents said no, but really the reason why they said no was because they thought drums was a boy's instrument. Right. So this is in the 60s, right? So right. Um, I was disappointed, of course, but um, I asked for the what I thought was the next best thing, which was guitar. And they allowed that. And I started taking guitar lessons and I did very well. They bought me a little acoustic guitar. Mm. I started writing songs immediately. And it, it paid off because now that's how I write my music is on guitar, you know. Right. So, uh, not all drummers have a melodic harmonic instrument in their background, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so I, I got a job at a chicken place when I was old enough where, you know, I could get a job and uh, took my money and got on the bus, went to the mall and signed myself up for drum lessons at the local music store. And everybody was shocked, oh, that's what she's doing with her money. Yeah. And I was, I was just in love with it. I fell in love with drum yeah. technique. I still practice, you know, three hours a day. And, no, uh, for you. and uh, at least, you know, I mean, at this age, I have to watch it because um, the mind's willing, but the body can't handle too much. I, I practice on a drum pad two okay. or three hours, and then I play my drum set, you know, two or three hours, you know, so, um, ah, you know, you I'm, 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 you know, when you want to play at a high level, you have to play a lot. Right. <laughs> well, at least I do, you know, I'm not one of these people who never plays, never does, just gets on it and kills it, you know, I, I have to keep up with it, but I love it, you know, I love it. There so, you go. Um, yeah. So I have to ask because I see you singing and I see you playing the drums. I have a hard time walking and chewing <laughs> gum. I mean, how did you realize that you could sing as well? Or when did you realize you could sing as well? Yeah, I, I come from a fairly musical kind of family. I mean, my parents were always yeah. singing. You know, I can remember hearing my dad singing in the shower in the morning. And uh, and I, I have a brother who's a few years younger than me, David Brunetti. He's in New York City. Um, he's a pretty well-known vocal coach, and he's written a book called Acting Songs, which they use as a textbook in high schools and colleges in their theater programs. And he coaches Broadway singers. He was a child prodigy pianist, a classical pianist. And, wow. he went, and he went to Carnegie Mellon University for piano. And, you know, he was legit. So you got a little ringer in the side corner help working with you, right? Yeah, and, and then everybody, and I have another, I have another brother, my brother, Ted, I have a brother with the same name. Uh, he was Frankie Coffee Cake in a Bronx Tale on Broadway a few years ah. ago. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, actors, singers, we, we all kind yeah. of sing. And even on this album, I had I was lucky uh, to fulfill one of my all lifelong wishes, which was to have a couple of my sisters sing background vocals. Oh, that's and, awesome! That is. Yeah, and then I got, and then our son James is a musician, and he played guitar. And on the title song "Queen of Pittsburgh," there's a father-son guitar solo. So. Oh, cool! So that is awesome. So tell know, me, like, were your parents very? musical was there a lot of music going on in the house 
just from their influence or was it more like you kind of got that started and everybody kind of followed? Well, my parents were actors. Oh, they were actors. Okay. Well, they, they, yeah, that's what originally, I was wondering. Originally, originally and their life, my life uh, parallels there, you know, in that um, they went to New York and tried to make it as actors. Yeah. Uh, they met in a play in high school or something, you know, that's how they met. Well, that's cool. And uh, I met my husband in a band, you know. And right. They went to New York and tried to make it as actors. And after a couple of years, life interfered. It was like World War II and things happened. My dad's a World War II vet. And um, then they decided they were going to have a family, you know, and they knew New York was a tough place to have a family. So they stayed in Pittsburgh to have their family and they gave up their acting careers. And then as the kids started to go away and get on our own, they uh, went back to acting and um, yeah. So they, they were in a lot of commercials, movies, uh, did a lot of local theater here in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool, yeah. And you know, so uh, there was always arts, you know, we're always legit yeah. with them, you know, no, they it. supported it, you know. And um, I was the, uh, like the black sheep, rock and roll world, you know oh, I, I wasn't legitimate like my like when you have a brother who's a classical pianist it's like it's rough <laughs> yeah oh yeah you know because yeah. what the hell was i doing you know what i well, mean can you play I, piano too no so it's interesting because people that play guitar right the notes yeah. are just put out into the key so i always wonder if it translates yeah well. i mean you know I have studied, I, I was a music maker for a couple of years, so I had to take class piano and things like that. But I'm not a piano player by any means. I wish I could. Right. I wish I, I wish I would have learned that, but you know, I mean, I still could. Still okay. time, yeah, absolutely. But, uh, no, I stayed with guitar. There was something about guitar that I liked. Yeah. Yeah. And Very I played cool. bass, I studied bass too. Bass is fun, right? Pardon me? Bass? Bass, yeah. bass is a lot of fun. Yeah. You have to have a, you know, bass players are born, not made, you know, in my opinion. All right. Yeah. There's a, there's a feel to it. Just because you can play guitar doesn't mean you're a bass player. Yeah. You know? Right. Uh, so drums and bass hook up, you know, I think there's a lot of the same sensibility, the same feel you have to be able to do for for both those instruments so I, I think it came a little natural to me and i started studying bass in uh, high school as well as drums and i was a cheerleader and i um gave up cheerleading to take my bass lessons because uh, I, I i was missing um cheerleading <laughs> practice okay <laughs> and um because of the bass lessons and we had a game against our big rival and I missed the cheerleading practice because I had a bass guitar lesson and they changed the end of the cheer. They, yeah. the, origi the original ending, we all jumped up in the air and waved our palm on Jay, right? Well, they changed it to a split. So here we are in front of like hundreds of kids, gym filled with screaming kids. We take the floor, the cheerleaders, we do this cheer. It's the end of the cheer. I'm jumping up in the air and everybody else is doing a split. And that's when I said, you know what? I'm gonna get out of this cheerleading thing and I'm gonna concentrate on my music because yeah. when, I get, when I get old, and I was probably thinking, you know, 30, um, <laughs> they're not gonna be cheering, but I'll be able to play the bass. You can play you can play your music forever. Yes. Yeah, isn't Absolutely. it great? That's I knew that, you know, young. And that was yeah. one of the things that I loved Absolutely. about it. You know, yeah, Van, Qu Van Clyburn was giving concerts in his 90s, you know, the pianist. Right. So I mean, I knew that. And um, it's a beautiful thing about uh, music is that the, the ability to do it uh, stays with you your whole life. And yeah. um, I love that about him. Yeah. Keith Richards is playing into his five hundreds. <laughs> yes, at least, if not more. He's a vampire, isn't he? <laughs> I love Keith. Yeah, 
<laughs> did you ever read? Did you read his book? No, I have to read that. Yeah, that's good. Have you read it? No, I have not. Oh, that sounds Definitely. good. The five string. You'll know what I mean when you read it. All right. <laughs> the five string. <laughs> All right. Those old blues guys, they only had five strings. They'd break their strings. They couldn't afford strings, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they played sure. five strings instead of six. He's, he's, he's funny as hell. That book, you got to read it. <laughs> oh, my gosh, that sounds great. Yeah, we're going to have to do yeah, that. That sounds good. Tag team it. Boom, done. I like it. I like it. Uh, for young singers out there, what would you want to say to them right now? Well, good for you. And uh, just keep doing it and be yourself. Don't be, you know, it's taken me almost, you know, I'm 69 years old. So it's taken me damn near 70 years to be comfortable in my own skin, you know, huh. and, and, and to be willing to project yeah. as an image, you know, show business, it, it's gone through all different. When I was in the, in the 70s and 80s, it was image. Right, all of a sudden this image thing came. So you yeah. had to, you had to look like a rock and roller. You know what I mean? And you had to, you had to look a certain way. And if you didn't, you know, and they judged you on that. You know, yeah. and it was, it was important back then. But nowadays, I think you can just be yourself. You know, I just agree. be yourself. And and authenticity, um, you can't fake it. You know, people know. Yeah there's something about it. You just know when somebody's real with you and when they're not. And I'm happy to be myself today. I don't, I'm not trying to hide it. I know other people who are my age and doing what I'm doing, but uh, they don't talk about their age at all. All right. And they don't want anyone to know. And um, I, I guess they're not comfortable with it. Uh, and right. They think it's a young, per, young person's game, which it mostly is, you know, but um, I just say, be yourself, you know, because you're a unique, we're all unique, you know, every single one of us. And um, that's, what, that's what people want to see because when you're comfortable being yourself, then that allows me to be comfortable being myself. True, and, yeah. and that's, and I think people really pick up on that, whether they know it or not. And uh, what that's a great what's, message. And that's, a, that's what makes you attractive you know, yeah. and that's what makes people want to find out more about you and listen to you and hear what you have to say, you know. So Teddy, we, we've interviewed, you know, we're both sports guys. Yes. And yeah. so we've interviewed some professional athletes, yep. actors, oh, actors cool. like that. One of the things that professional athletes talk about is the difference between X, like great and not great is the little things like one step, things like that. For a musician, we've never asked Ooh, this. No, we have great question. We don't, is, what is the difference between a great musician and not like as far as your skill level? Is it the little things? Is, is, can you point out to a difference between somebody who really kind of belongs out there or who isn't, or you see somebody who may be a drummer that you're like, that person's a phenomenal drummer. What's that difference? I'll tell you what it is to me. And I, I heard once that uh, this is what Mozart said. They asked Mozart, what's the most important thing in music? Is it melody? Is it harmony? Is it, what, what is it? And he said, it's timing, it's time. He said, one note can be a song if it's placed properly. And that's wow. in the whole, and all the skills, you know, all the nuances, all the, and everything about it, it's timing, you know, it's time. Everybody thinks the drummer is the one who has to have the time, but everybody has to have, the, have time. Right. And that's, and, you know, practicing for me, practicing with a metronome is key and it separates the men from the boys. You know, I, I remember my brother, the classical pianist, as a child, he had that click, 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 click metronome playing his scales, playing, you know, practicing hours and hours and, and hearing all the classic piano pieces that he would uh, play. I mean, um, yeah, I think it's timing, you know. Um, it's Sometimes it's 
what you don't do that is the important thing. It's the space between the notes, you know? It's, it's that kind of stuff. To me, it's timing. That's yeah, brilliant. That is. I mean, it goes back to when we talk to athletes, professional athletes, they talk about the first step. We talk mm. about that being important. One That's note, timing. timing. Yeah, it is. It's absolutely it, <laughs> brilliant. The correlations are so amazing that for me and him, it's pretty mind blowing. We never in music, we never would have thought timing would, at least for me, I should say, timing would be that important. But now looking back and seeing things, I'm sitting there going, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you're off a beat or a quarter beat or something like that, it throws the whole song completely off. So yeah, I mean, and nowadays you should see in the studio when you record, right, the, the digital thing, right? Yeah. Like they, they can move notes like milliseconds, you know? Wow. And, and that's, and then when you see, and, and really great players, they have that, there's something about it, right? There's an essence to it. it it's funny because, because I studied, I study athletes too, and they're mm. training because I wanted to be good, you know? Yeah, yes. And uh, I, I read a book, I, I don't know, it was, it was a long time ago. It was like in the 70s or 80s, I think in the 80s. Uh, and somebody followed all these athletes who were setting world records, all right? Like and um, uh, Maximum Performance or something was the name of the book. And it was- Wasn't that was, George Plimpton? It, it might have been. I, I don't. I don't remember. Yeah. But uh, could have been. Uh, and it was just funny how all these people who were setting these world records, he would somebody would set a world record and he would fly right there, you know, try to get there within forty eight hours to talk to them about it. And many of them didn't feel well that mm. day. Didn't think when they did it that they did their best. They thought they could have done better. But they mm. were so they were so relaxed see, that they just let their training take sure. over, and you know they weren't they weren't expecting to do it. You know, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. You know, interesting, yeah. huh? Yeah. So, you know, as you say, training. This actually leads into my where my next kind of uh, questioning is: you have Dean Allen Sargent oh, yeah. producing training coaches. He's somebody who's produced some pretty amazing things. Mm -hmm. How influential in your songwriting is he also in adjusting in your training, even today? How important is that producer, that person, like a Dean Allen Sargent? Oh, well, it's a, it's, it's a lot when you're making a, a record, all right? I, I call myself a recording artist because I believe the recording, the final mix, right? the master, that's, that's the art, all right? But there's a lot that goes into it. And Dean, Dean has produced both of my albums. He produced my first album back in the, the late 80s in New York City. So we're old, we're old friends. We've worked together a lot and we've both done our best work together, you know? Yeah. And he's, he's a philosopher, you know, as well. He's very... Uh, uh, self-educated guy, you know what I mean? And he, he's very smart and he has a lot of intuition yeah. and he knows a lot. He's been around a lot of big stars and recording situations and stuff. So he, and he's my age. So, you know, you can't get 40 years experience when you're 20 years old, you know? Right. So, I, sure. so, I've, so I've benefited from Dean and Michael Hennigan, his, his um, production partner. And his, uh, his understanding of timing must be incredible. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, he would, we didn't record that album uh, with a click track. He wouldn't let me, which disappointed me, but he wanted it. But I have great time, really. Right. So um, I think that there might be one or two tracks on there that we did do with a metronome, but um, uh, you know, a click track. But um, <clears throat> Most of them we didn't, and um, and I've put a metronome to to the tracks that we did, 
and they fluctuate maybe three beats a minute and then it'll come back you know they you know it'll go out and come back so it's pretty natural and it's pretty straightforward so yeah i'm proud of that you know and uh but uh he he always wanted this album to be organic you know and um I think we achieved that. He's he's into psychoacoustics and all kinds of stuff. So he what he brought to bear on this thing was real crazy, you know. And we I, I mean we love each other. We're he's my brother from another mother. So is Mike, you know. I mean I we're family now, and they're my band now. They want to, you know, they're all in. We started working together. My my problem with my band right now is we're all over the place. I, my husband and I. My husband's my lead guitar player, Jim Mason. Oh. Cool. He's, he's sitting across the room here. He's hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, what up? <laughs> he's waving. Uh, uh, we're in Pittsburgh. Uh, Dean and Mike are in the Poconos, so they're six hours away. Oh, and wow. then our, our keyboard player is in New York City. You know, right. I mean, so um, we're not gigging right now. We're we're doing our. Uh, I'm making more videos, which is nice. a whole nother art form. And I'm really fortunate to have BMHAC uh, with Abe Yerguia and uh, Chris Rodriguez. Uh, they're graduates from Rutgers Film School, oh, Rutgers sweet. University. So they're bona fide filmmakers. Yeah. And my, my songs tell stories, so they lend themselves yeah, to they, yeah. a great video. But, you know, the beauty of their cinematography, you know, the coloring of the, I'm learning all about, you know, about, uh, videography and and films and, and that kind of stuff uh it's a whole new thing for me the whole visual thing this this next video they should that when they shot it here in pittsburgh they did some of it they shot me with a drone and things like that so it oh, was cool. yeah it was, it was a lot of fun you that's know really and neat. i'm i'm enjoying that whole thing you know yeah the visual aspect of it it's it's um because they say um visual images stick with you um a lot easier and a lot faster than audio images do yes so definitely. so i mean i'm all in on the video thing we're going to do like, two, like or three it, more, girl. two or three more videos and then if something catches fire here and there then maybe you know with covid too you, you couldn't plan anything because they, they're talking about shutting people down again you know yeah. so so from you know, to go through the gigging thing right now, I mean, Pittsburgh isn't a big enough city to support a, an original act and I don't do cover band stuff so anymore. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, we're going to wait. I, I want to tour Europe. That's, I would love to do that because there I've you never, know. you know, I've never done it, you know? Yeah. So that's what I'm looking, <laughs> hoping will happen. You know, yeah, that would be phenomenal to be able to go to her. Yes, we'll have fun, right? Right. Oh, God, yeah. Well, she she likes to tour. Yeah, because there's some that want to <laughs> jump in really quick. We got to we gotta tie this up pretty soon. Oh, my God. Yeah, but I got to get to this. Okay, ah. get to She it. toured for barbecue. Yes. Oh, yeah. Food. <laughs> I mean, you guys, guys, come oh, on. Oh, yeah, you guys got to come to Pittsburgh. I have I have a smoker out on my, I have a lot. Yes, that's with awesome. My husband. Road and trip. I, I, and and honey, I make I make the best pulled pork and brisket, oh. smoked chicken. I smoke potatoes. <laughs> oh my goodness, yes. Oh yeah, baked I beans. Like I smoke them. Oh my god, we're, we're so we're, all this traveling for 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 barbecue. Yeah. I gotta know. Yes, the best city for barbecue. Well, I love Texas barbecue, but oh, if you want, too. but if you want ribs, uh, what's up? Honey, what's that place in Kansas City? City. Yeah. Arthur's, Arthur, whatever. Arthur's Arthur. in Kansas City. That's the best. Not oh, real oh, you never, you can't, I mean, you can't find it like that anywhere. Really? But, better than Nashville, yeah. better than Memphis, better than St. Louis. Yeah. That's it. Wow. That's the one. Yeah, but I'm Texas amazed. barbecue in general, their brisket, you know. No, nah, you're not going to beat that. Interesting. Unless you come to my house. You know, here, like here's it. the thing about barbecue restaurants. They have to hold that meat at like 140 or so, 160, whatever temperature it is, for all day long. You know what I yeah, mean? Right. 
it's never as good as when you do it yourself. Well, true. You know, because I because I'll pull my pork butts right after the after they're finished cooking. I wrap I double wrap them in foil, then in a towel, then in a then in a cooler for two hours. Oh. Let those juices reconstitute, yeah. and then you pull it. Yeah. And it's like, it's like butter, all right. And I mean, I'm right? telling you, I'm telling you, you get you, you can't get it like that. Oh, oh my god! Uh, in a, in a restaurant, sure. you know, because they can't do that, you know. So real quick, we always like to give a shout out to our sponsor, which is Anchor by Spotify. Thank you very much, Anchor by Spotify, for sponsoring us. Hey folks, if you're interested in checking out Acre, that's where our podcast is. And you'll also see this show on YouTube. Teddy, anybody you want to shout out to? Oh, I just want to, anybody who's supporting me now, I just want to thank you. Um, you know, when you go on the website and you buy the CDs or if you buy some merch or something, it just allows us to keep making like awesome videos and freshen your playlist for you, you know, yes. with, with like new it. music. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, meeting everybody. And you can always DM me, comment. Now I'm on all the social media things. Teddybrunetti.com. You can find everything. We're yes. cool. We're cool. You know, and I, and I love meeting new people. And that's one of the great things about doing music this time around. Is, Look, I get to meet you guys. Exactly. Rob and Chris, it's, it's, a, it's like, you're the best, man. Look at you. Hey. Thank, Thank you. you. How much Thank fun you. Is we it? have a good time. We have one last question before we send out. Yes. Are the Steelers going all the way this year? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course. There of course. Go. And we gotta keep Ben, we gotta keep Ben safe, you know. Ben, but it, yeah. This could be it for Ben. This is his year, right? The yeah, I mean, out. I'm surprised he came back. I mean, I've run into him a couple of times over the years. And nice. I know he doesn't like getting hit. You know, I mean, who does, right? But, right. uh, oh, come on. Isn't that the greatest thing getting drilled? I mean, come on. But he's, he's such a gamer, you know? Oh, yeah. Ben. You know, and so a big shout out to all the Steeler fans at the Hall of Fame with the terrible towels. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was amazing this week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Troy Polamalu. Oh, yeah. my goodness. I yes. still have my Troy Polamalu wig. Ah, yeah. We watch I the games. It. I'll put that wig on and run around. Yeah, it's funny. That's yeah. amazing. But, you know, the Steelers, what, what can I say? Right? It's Pittsburgh, <laughs> I baby. It. I understand, but I'm sorry, but I, I am going to kind of tell you that the Niners are going to win it this year. So <laughs> <I'm> just <laughs> there's just battle. Yeah. Well, Teddy, you're, you've been wonderful. I, we actually went longer than we normally do just because it was such a pleasure to talk yes, to you. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was so much fun meeting you guys. Yes, definitely. Come to Pittsburgh for some cute. We've got to come full point. That's an invite. You know, you know what I'll ass. make you guys? I'm going to make you barbecued spaghetti. Did you ever have oh, it? Oh, what? Wait a oh, second. Oh, that, you can get that in Memphis. But um, Barbecued spaghetti? Yeah, but doesn't it man. fall through the grills? You, you make pool. It's pulled pork. <laughs> You're fun. You, you do your pulled pork and it's, and I make it like with my homemade tomato sauce and barbecue sauce mixed together. You know what I mean? It's off the hook, man. Oh my <laughs> it's goodness. Off the hook. You're going to be competing with my wife because she makes oh. a phenomenal gravy. I got to uh, tell you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So, you well, know. Good for you. Lucky you. Oh yeah. Come on. Look <laughs> at me. Cause gravy, gravy's my specialty too. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there we go. Teddy, the wonderful thing. Thank you. What, you. Up. what a great show. Definitely. Appreciate you. And we'll follow up with you. Yes. Thank you. Love you. Definitely. Too. And love we will follow up with you in the future again. I yes. we can do oh, that. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. Maybe when um, the, after the next video or two come out. That'd be great. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you. All right, Teddy. Thank you so much. And uh, have a great, great, wonderful time. Definitely. Hey, everybody out there. Thank, thank you. you and what up? What up?